Greetings. Today I'd like to introduce the concept of the race condition in code. Previously we saw how we can have multiple threads running within the same process. These threads can be sharing resources. One may be updating the resource and another may be looking at the updates of that resource and making a decision. How do these uh, two threads stay synchronized during these updates? And what if one of these threads make a change before the other one sees that change? Or both are trying to change the variable at the same time. This can lead to a number of very subtle conditions called race conditions. The best way to understand is through an example. I have some code here on the right of a bounded buffer. That is, there's a single buffer. One method puts objects into the buffer. Another method removes objects from the buffer. Those are called enter and remove. Take a look at the code for a second. Let me explain it. The count maintains the count of the number of items in the, of the size of the buffer, uh, the number of items in the buffer, and if the count gets to be the size of the buffer, then it loops until there's a space for one of the objects to be added. Correspondingly, on the remove, notice that when the count is zero, there's nothing to remove from the buffer, and so we loop until something gets put into the buffer. Once we find that there's room for something in the buffer or there's something to be removed, on the remove call, we go ahead and remove the item from the buffer, and um, we move forward the out pointer, which points to the next location in the buffer to remove something from. And on the enter call, we correspondingly add something into the buffer and increase the in uh, pointer. Pause this video and make sure that you understand the code before we go on. Great. I assume that you've understood the code in detail. Now let's talk about two threads executing in this code at the same time. Let's say one thread is in the enter method, while another thread is in the remove method. One thread is a producer and putting things in, and another thread is a consumer and removing things. How can they um, get in each other's way? One way to think about race conditions is first to identify all of the shared objects or all of the shared variables between multiple threads. In this case, there are two shared variables the count, which is the number of items in the buffer at the time, and the buffer itself. And the count and the buffer work together to keep the uh, items in the buffer at the right level. So, to look through the code, assuming two threads, pause this video and see if you can find a race condition. Okay, I assume you've done that and you're back. Let's go ahead and look at what could be the race condition here. Now, I'm gonna go and look at the count, the increment and the decrement of the count in a little more detail at the machine level language. So the code on the left shows the count being incremented and decremented, two separate threads, in a clean way. The one thread that comes in, we're gonna increment the count because we're adding something to the buffer. And so the value of the count is moved into the register the register is incremented, and then the register is written back to the memory itself. All that seems fine. Now the value of the count in the memory is one greater. Now the thread comes to remove the item, and the memory is put into the a register, the count variable is put into a register. The register is decremented, and that register is written back to memory. Again, now the, va the value in the memory is one less. However, let's assume something else happens instead. Let's assume that these threads are intermingled and run at the same time, but because they can, either through a context switch or uh, on multiple processors. So that's the code on the right. Here we have the incrementing thread, or the green code, uh, load from the memory and increment the register, and then at the same time, or a uh, context switch, either way, the memory is loaded into the other threads, uh, register and decremented. Now, both threads try to write their, their registers back to memory. Unfortunately, one will get there first, thus the race. The one that gets there first, uh, in this case, gets overwritten by the one that goes second. And so while we have think that the count should be the same, the count will be either one bigger or one smaller. This is a classic race condition, and it happens when variables are shared across multiple threads in the same process. Let's take a look at another example of a race condition using the exact same code. 
Let's assume now that instead of one thread doing the entering and one thread doing the removing, we have many threads producing and many threads consuming. So many threads can be in the enter call and many threads can be in the remove call. Can you see some other race conditions? Go ahead and pause the video and take a look. Welcome back. Let me point out, there's, there's a few race conditions here, but let me point out two of interest. Assume we have two threads entering objects, so two producer threads, and assume that the buffer size is, uh, the count is one less than the buffer size. So there's room for one more object. We have two threads coming in. They both go to that while loop and they see if the count is equal to the buffer size. They see if the buffer is full. They both notice that, hey, it turns out there's room for one more object. So they both fall through that while loop and they both put their item in the buffer. Unfortunately, they've overflowed the buffer now and they've overwritten an item. Correspondingly, there's a very similar race on the remove side. Assume that there's just one item in the buffer and we have two uh, threads ready to remove from the buffer. They both come in and they see if there's any items in the buffer. Is the count zero? Well, it's not, the count is one. They both drop through that while loop and they try to remove something from the buffer. Turns out two threads trying to remove only one object is a problem. One will get the object, the other will get nothing. That's another example and a very common example of a race condition. So you can see in general, whenever there's multiple threads accessing a shared resource and making decisions based upon that, you have the possibility of a race condition. In order to guard against these race conditions, we need to introduce this idea of synchronization.